In this video, I'm going to explain the difference between cheat meals and refeeds and why every time you go out to eat or eat a little bit more than your certain caloric amount that you gain about five pounds the next day. So if you guys don't know me now, my name's Adam Bunnell, online fat loss professional. I currently work with 78 guys in my program currently who have been struggling to get lean, struggling to lose body fat and spinning their wheels trying to get to a leaner body fat percentage for some time. I specialize in hormonal priming, body recomposition, and higher low forms of nutrition through metabolism manipulation. So I've quite literally helped hundreds of guys doing nutrition consultations get to a leaner body fat percentage and I want to actually break down the science of why cheat meals versus refeeds are important to know. So there's a difference between cheat meals and refeeds. Certain people who do cheat meals just kind of allocate a you know free meal that isn't tracked um, and they wonder why they gain you know X amount of pounds the next day or they're struggling and spinning their wheels never really making good progress. And so I'm going to kind of explain why that is and then why you should restrict to more of like a refeed structure and understand what you're intaking in your body to continue to make good progress and maintain your metabolic health, right? So let's dive into like cheat meals, right? So if you've been struggling to get lean for some time and you kind of been hanging on cheat meals each week telling yourself, yeah, I can, I'm going to wait till Saturday so I can get a good cheat meal in and then you gain a bunch of weight the next day and wonder why, it's because over time you've probably been under eating to the point where you're now your metabolic rate is slightly low and that is a clear depiction of of gaining next weight the next day and your body not basically adapting to the overconsumption of food, therefore having you gain a little bit of weight the next day, right? So you have to realize that over time, as your metabolic rate decreases, as your calories decrease, the impact of calories is very much greater, right? So as you start to get lower in calories, the impact of the caloric amount and certain amounts of calories gets much greater because your metabolic rate starts to decline. So I specialize in metabolic rate and metabolism manipulation, and you can go through many of my videos on metabolism, but how it works is basically once you start to downregulate your metabolism by lowering your food amount, you go something through someone what's called diet fatigue or thermogenic, thermogenic adaptation, where your body automatically lowers your metabolic rate because you are starting to lower your calories. So if you're stuck in a fat loss plateau under 2,000 calories and wondering why every time you go out to eat with a family member with the wife, you gain a bunch of weight the next day, this is why, right? You've downregulated your metabolism and those cheat meals that you're giving you yourself each week, they're keeping you stuck and they're keeping you stuck right where you're at, right? So as your metabolic rate starts to decrease and you go out and eat 1,000 calories when your metabolic rate has decreased into the, when you've been under eating in food, that 1,000 calories has a larger, larger impact than it would be if your metabolic rate was sound and healthy, right? So it's a clear depiction of you know somebody who's eating 3,000 calories, allocated 3,000 calories a day, typically their metabolic rate is a lot higher, typically, typically their body, body can adapt very quick, as is somebody who's lowered their calories over a certain amount of time and lowered their calories to where that 1,000 calorie increase in cheap meal has a larger impact, right? So people who maybe try to get lean for vacation because they want to look good for vacation, lower their calories to 2,000, 1,800, 1,600, they go on vacation and they blow up like a balloon and you look like shit, right? And that's because like once you do that, once you put yourself in a place of metabolic purgatory, that you are more susceptible, you are more susceptible to gaining weight and gaining water retention and gaining, you know, just weight really fast because of the overconsumption of calories. So people who do these weekly cheat meals, when they've been under eating 2,000 calories, 18,000 calories, 1,600 16, calories, they give themselves 1,000 more calories a day, and the actual percentage-wise of how much you're eating is a significant amount more, which takes your body a week to actually digest through that food, to actually burn through that food, right? So if you're wanting to get yourself more into a place of more metabolic sound, because the overall purpose of a cheat meal or a refeed, as I like to call it, I think cheat meals are a simple you know, strategy that people make themselves feel good to get themselves towards the end of the week. But like what a refeed is typically meant for is to keep your metabolic health in check, right? So think about it like this. Once you increase food in the form of usually carbohydrates, because carbohydrates support main, main body functions like breathing, blood flow, sleeping, and organ function, which is tailored to 60% of your metabolism, which is the basal metabolic rate. As you give yourself a little bit more food, your body is basically adapting to burning more food over the course of the next couple of days, right? So you give yourself a little bit more food in the form of carbohydrates, your metabolic rate spikes to burn through that calories. In the course of the next couple of days, the body's anticipating getting more food, right? So you have to keep in context that in these refeed meals, you need to track them. You need to make sure that you're eating 
primarily carbohydrates, keeping your protein in check, and making sure that you're getting good fat intake, but not too much in the form of where your body is going to be stopped up by digestion. Because fat, keep in mind, is high, the high, higher calorically valued macromolecule, right? So sticking to a refeed that's going to be good in carbohydrates to spike the metabolic rate, to get your body into a place of more of a metabolic sound and keep your metabolism in check, you should be aiming to get a good carbohydrate meal. But carbohydrate meal that is good in digestion and easy to di- for the body to digest so you can utilize that more and you could tailor that more toward your metabolic rate, right? So for people that typically, you know, are under 2,000 calories, obviously even refeed meals should be kept at a minimum, right? And basically a smaller refeed meal rather than a larger refeed meal because you have to keep in context the actual percentage wise of how many calories you're down regulating versus how many calories you're inputting. So let's think about it like this from a weekly perspective. Let's say that you're eating 2,000 calories for the sake of, you know, actual mathematics, which I don't feel like doing right now, but you're eating about 14,000 calories per week, right? So let's say you go out and have a Sonic cheeseburger, call it a refeed, and then have a ice cream as well, right? So right there off the back, Sonic cheeseburger is like 2,000 calories, milkshakes like 1,000 calories, and that's automatically putting you from 14,000 calories a week to 17,000 calories a week, which is already giving you basically another day of a full amount of calories plus some. So it takes your body a lot longer to go through rather than let's say you're eating 3,000 calories, you're, you're at 21,000 calories per the week, you eat maybe a, a refeed meal or a cheat meal, let's call it just for the sake of time, um, and now you're eating 21,000 calories, you're eating 24,000 calories. So you see how that percentage-wise of actually calorie increase is a lot larger. So people be people have, as I come across in my DMs on my YouTube channel, have purposely put themselves in a place of metabolic purgatory by making it harder for them to stay leaner for longer, right? Basically putting themselves in a place of metabolic purgatory where their metabolism is lowered over time. They can't go out to eat with a wife without gaining gaining weight. They can't go out to eat with birthdays, Thanksgivings, Christmas without gaining weight. They can't go on the thanks, you know, vaca- family vacation without blowing up like a balloon. And it's not very sustainable. You have to understand how the metabolism works. And to be in a place of actual sustainability, you need to understand your metabolic rate. Me, for instance, I eat anywhere from 27 to 3,000 calories. I can go on vacation, went to Marbella, Spain um, on a retreat for, for an online, online coach's retreat. Came back, same, same physique that I had when I left. You know, I go out to eat with friends, same physique I had when I left because I put my place in a more versatile form of a metabolic rate, right? Rather than you guys putting yourself in 2,000 calories, 18,000 calories, now your metabolic rate is at the rate of a teenage girl and you're wondering why you can't lose weight and you're wondering why you, you bounce back in weight constantly, losing 20, gaining 20, losing 20, and this is going along for you know a majority of your lives, right? And the truth is, is that like there's way too many people out there that don't understand what me- like your metabolic rate and how it tailors to calories in versus calories out, and they will die thinking that they can just go and do a bunch of cardio and eat a little amount of food, and that's why they're stuck, right? So anyways, like the overall difference, what I'm trying to explain between a cal- like a refeed and a cheat meal is that refeed is more calculated. Refeed, refeed is more carbohydrate beast. Refeed is more calculated to what you're currently intaking per day as a cheat meal is just some lazy form of telling myself, oh, I can have what I want today, which puts you in a place where you gain a bunch of weight and you're kind of spinning your wheels for as long as you can and you never really make true amount of progress, right? So <clears throat> if you guys like this video, I'm going to start posting three times a week starting right now. We're going to ramp up to five. Um, there, I have a free metabolic priming masterclass that's going to be linked below on everything I know about metabolic priming has over two 260,000 views and has helped over 100,000 people get to a place of, you know, leaner physique, understand your metabolic rate, understand metabolism. So go ahead and check out that video and I'll see you guys in the next video.